Thank you for joining us at Christ Cathedral Church. Our live stream will begin in just a few moments. Our weekly services are held Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. and Wednesday night Bible study with Bishop Allen starts at 7.30 p.m. each week. You are holy, holy. 
together one more time. Open the eyes. Open the eyes, my heart, Lord. All it takes is just a few of us. Just sing it out. Cause we want, we really want to see you. This is my heart's desire. Open the eyes. Open the eyes of my heart. Cause we want to see Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. Cause we want to see you. We want to see you. Sing, we want to see you right there. We want to see you. 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 Make it personal. Sing, I want to. I want to see you. 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 Sing it out. Sing, I want to. Come on, if that's your heart's crossing. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. Cause I've got to see you. I want to see you. Come on all over this place. If that's your testimony, if that's your heart's desire is to see the King of Kings, to see the Lord of Lords, I dare you to open up your mouth and fill this room. Come on, come on. It may just be a few of us, but that's all it takes. If you want to see the King of Glory, if you want to see the Lord of Lords, I dare you to open up your mouth. We want to see you, King of Kings. We want to see you, Lord of Lords. I want to, I want to see you. I want to, I want to see you. I've got to see you. I've got to, I've got to see you. Oh, I want to see you. Thank you, God. I want to see you, God. I want to see you, God. Hallelujah. Mm. We give you glory, God. We give you honor, God. And we praise you in this place. Oh, we bless your holy name, God. For you're worthy, worthy, worthy. You're worthy, worthy, worthy. In all we do, God. Let us see you, God. In all we do. Let us see you, God. Hallelujah. I stand before you this morning. Hallelujah. Woo, God. We want to see you. We want to see you. We want to see you, Jesus. We really, really want to see you. We really, really. See you, Jesus. I've got to 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 see you,
Open the eyes of my heart, my own. Open the eyes of my own. We wanna see. We wanna see. We wanna see. your presence, God, that is in this place. Woo, God, have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Hallelujah. I stand before you this morning. Hallelujah. To introduce to some, I think everybody in the room actually knows my morning coffee. That's what he is to me. Woo. <laughs> My personal intercessor, hallelujah, hallelujah. My personal cheerleader, hallelujah. The one who keeps me lifted, who keeps me grounded, who sold out to God at the age of 15, hallelujah. He's been preaching like a madman, hallelujah. All of his adult life, hallelujah. He is a pastor of Judah Restoration Worship Center. He is the husband of Paula Michelle Watson. He is the father of, oh God, Aretha, Adrian, Rakeem, <laughs> David, Miracle. He is the grandfather, hallelujah, hallelujah, of three, hallelujah, even in saying all of that, he is a man that loves the Lord with all of his heart, all of his soul, all of his might. So without further ado, hallelujah, as my baby makes his way, I present to you Bishop Esau Watson, Jr. All right, God is good. Amen. He's worthy to be praised. Let's lift our hands in his atmosphere. God, we thank you now for who you are in our lives. Thank you, Lord, that we are no longer in darkness. We walk in the marvelous light. Thank you, Lord, for your presence in our lives. And we've come today, God, just to lift up your name. You are so awesome. You're so on time. Have your way in this place, oh God. Have your way in this conference, God. Somebody needs 
a fresh anointing. Somebody need to be encouraged. We thank you for our presiding prelate, Bishop R.J. Bird, and his leadership, oh God. Thank you for the second assistant here, God, Bishop Sherman Allen and his wife, oh Tanya. God, thank you that they are walking in the grace and the favor over their life. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you may be seated in this present. I'm not going to be long today. It is a pleasure to be in the house of the Lord. Thank the woman of God for the worship. Amen. Amen. She gave us such a warm uh, presence of the Lord. Amen. And she's evident you ain't got to have a whole choir. Just have some anointing. Your anointing makes the difference. God is awesome. And we're to be praised. Thank God for... Let's give Apostle Allen a hand. Amen. His wife, Tanya. Amen. Love them. Amen. Glad to see Bishop Perry. Amen. Love this brother. Amen. I'm excited for the new season that is in his life. Amen. Amen. How do you know God is so awesome? I don't have a whole lot talk about the day ain't gonna be long amen um at the church here I've been trying to tune into God because uh, we're in a time now where people are sluggish and people are indecisive a lot of times about what they feel about God because yes, yes, if he ain't giving out houses they ain't got much to say but how many of y'all know that when we leave here, the stuff you have don't matter? And so we've been in a kind of a mold of just letting God have his way and, and imprompt to us what he wants to say. I think this conference is on time because as Bishop preached last night, it's about the church finding the inroad to get back to the core value that God called us to do, which was to save people and to empower people. And for just a brief moment, not going to preach, just going to kind of talk a little bit, amen, amen. If you need a holler, let me get out right now. Oh, glory, that's my holler for you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> He's worthy of all the praise. Yeah. I want to look at something. Uh, the Apostle Paul in the book of Philippians has something that I want to talk about today. I just want to kind of title this message that he just dropped in my spirit, amen. I want to talk about a defining moment. A defining moment because her Lord said that's what many of us are now. And I want to read these few verses. I pick up the other but the first verse, uh, chapter one, verse six. And he says, Being confident of this very thing, yes, sir. that he who has begun a good work in you yeah, yeah. will complete it yeah. until the day of Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. Just as it was right for me. To think this of you all, yes, sir. because I have in you, in my heart, in as much as both my chains, yes. and and in the defense and in, in the defense of the I'm sorry, and in the defense confirmation of the gospel. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, all right. You are all partakers with me of grace. Yes. We're just gonna stop right there. Is that all right? Yes, sir. And then we're gonna pick up this other verse here. Uh, verse 19 says. For I know that this will turn out for my deliverance through your prayer uh -uh, and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ according to my earnest expectations and the hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed. But with all boldness as always, so now also Christ be magnified in my body whether by life or by death. Yes, sir. I just want to talk to the, for the while, teach you about a defining moment. A defining moment. All right. Uh, I heard the Lord simply said it to talk today in reference to about a defining moment because we're in some challenging times. Yes, sir. And what you have after church is going to really matter. Mm. Yes, sir. Y'all missed that. Not, not, not what you are in church, yeah. but what you are after church. After church. Yes, sir. 
And, and, and a lot of times when we have defining moments, that the, those are seasons in our life when God sometimes have us in a place where we feel unbalanced and we can feel uncertain. And that's where we have to pull on what we know about him. And so when I begin to study this a little bit and think about the Apostle Paul, see, when you're going through a test in life, you have to be able to stand on some spiritual uh, context or some statements that you know about God. Yes, sir. That's good. Now, 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 now you ain't, you ain't going to like this. A lot of folks don't understand where title comes consequences. Talk, talk, Bishop. Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul now had, had been... Uh, in labor with this church, established this church. Now, the thing I like about Paul is, I ain't got time to dig it out, Paul didn't make himself an apostle. Y'all missed that. He was called. See, sometimes you don't understand the elevation of the ministry starts with a down moment. And Paul, uh, alias Saul, was knocked down and God talked to him. God disabled him. God put him in a waiting room and waited for somebody that he called by Ananias to lay hands on him. Watch the pattern now. A down moment, a waiting room, and a laying of the hands. Tell somebody, I've been there, amen? Down moments, waiting room, and waiting for the laying of hands. And not just any hands, devout hands full of the Holy Ghost. In this season now, you must know who you are in God. And so I began to ask God, now God, what is Paul saying in this defining moment? What, what is he saying to the church? The church at Philippi, somewhat young, somewhat yet energized by the, the movement of God. They are watching how Paul now is incarcerated, but yet still having a voice. Now you ain't going to like this. Many people today in the church have lost their voice. They've lost the zeal. To go after God. And so I just want to share these few little nuggets here that I'll be out your way. Because you right now are in a defining moment. Because you got to understand, God said to me the other day, I don't need numbers. I need your faith. I don't need numbers. I need your faith. I, I, I need your worship. I need your praise. And so now... He's on center stage, and that's where we are now in our world. The church is on center stage. The other day I was listening to Bishop Barber. He was preaching a sermon about how can you worship God without a conscience. My God. My God. He said we are now in a time now where people are trying to worship God with no conscience. No, no clarity of humanity, no desire to see people saved. We, we talk about prosperity, but it's only for certain people. There is no compassion, but we want to talk about him being Savior and mishandle people. Be mean and cruel, trying to worship God without a conscience. So now Paul here kind of brings it in light because now he's a defining moment because he, he wants us to know that I, I, I'm connected to God. And this is a part of my walk. Now, they just got a quick email. Look at your name. Say, neighbor. neighbor. Some folk have to lead me to get where I need to get. Some folk have to lead me to get where I need to get. I'm in a place now in my ministry. When folks say they want to quit, I say, bye bye. Farewell. If your season is up, then I, I, it's not my job, especially if God's not, not ordained me to pull you back, let you go. Because God is going to do what he needs to do with mm -hmm. or without you. Yes, sir. You are right, sir. Center stage now. The church. The leaders. I said some months ago, and they, and they finally called it, my help is not going to come from the next president. It's not going to come who's in the Senate, who's in the House of Representatives. It's going to come from my relationship with God. So now let's let's look at this. Then I'm almost through preaching. Uh, in 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 this in this defining moment, Paul said something that very is very important. He says, "Being confident is very one thing that he's begun a good work in me and will complete it." 
So now, what, what, is, what is Paul actually saying in his statement? The first thing God told me to talk to you about is that as he makes this statement, Paul is saying that we should not let adversity, number one, take our, take our motivation or our momentum. Adversity should not take your motivation or your momentum. Paul says, my perspective of this, that even though I am incarcerated, God has not left me. What God has done strategically now has put me on stage to see am I going to operate in what I know about him. He started something in you. And the adversity is only the defining moment to see where you keep the motivation and the momentum. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Holler back at me. I want you to understand. Now you got to preach if they ain't saying nothing. Right. Yeah, right. If ain't nobody lifting their hands, you still got to be able to preach the word. Yes, sir. So the first defining statement he says in, the, in, 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 in this chapter 1, verse 6, he says, don't let your, mom, your momentum or motivation be taken away because of adversity. Mm. What if Jesus had a quit in the garden? Caused the, the inconsistency of the disciples who couldn't carry out a simple assignment just to pray one hour. Look at somebody say, it wasn't nothing deep, just to, just to pray. One hour. And when he came back, they were asleep. He was, he was frustrated, but he still carried on ministry. Yes, sir. He said, I, I, I don't understand why you can't pray one hour. And he said, Lord, remove this cup but from me, this bitter cup, but not my will, but your will. Now, in the last few years of my life, God has ch- Tested that statement because, see, when you when you when you say statement like that, means you're willing to let your flesh die, and let God have His way. Where's your momentum now? In this defining moment, where's your motivation? Got time to dig it out, but adversity, when used right, can fuel you. Can give you energy. Adversity, when it's used right, can let some people know if you really have what you say you have. Just a quick email. Sometimes people want God to get you out, but there's more power in coming through. Because when you come through, the story has a little more weight. Ain't got time to dig it out, but over there in Daniel chapter 6, when he went in the lion's den, and, and God brought him out. Dara said, I, I got to make a shift in the reason because if, if your God can bring you out of this circumstance unharmed, I'm serving the wrong God. And he changed the whole region to follow Daniel's God. So the question now is, do you have enough impact for somebody to look at your life and want to make a change? I know you, I got to quit. I know you shout good, but do you have any power? So this is the final moment now. Paul is saying to this young church, e- e- even though it's rough, even though it's an inconvenience, I'm still motivated. Because God has started a work. I ain't got time to dig it all out, but God started this work. And I'm confident just because of adversity, which really is an indication you're in the right vein. When you have challenge, that means you are in the right vein because the devil don't challenge folk that ain't effective. But when you're doing some things, the work. And God, God, God has kind of moved me. You know, I don't get excited because folks shout and join. I want to see now how long you're going to last. When they give you when we, when, they, when we give you an assignment you don't like, and and the assignment don't include a mic, it might be a broom. Yes, sir. 
Maybe be, do something that you yeah. don't really want to do. Uh -huh. no, no. The defining moment. Paul is incarcerated, but he says, this adverse is not taking my momentum or my motivation. Now, this, 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 this happens because he's in the adverse moment. He's incarcerated, being confident very one thing. He's begun a good work. Uh, he was performing until the day of Jesus Christ, King James Version. I liked it. Amen. But now watch it. Now, this is the true nugget for me. He, he says, adversity don't change the promise. That's, that's just that's good. what he said. That's good. He, he said, y'all getting caught up in the storm and forgot I made the storm. Come on. And the storm voice will cease when you speak the word of God in the storm. Come on, man. You, you, you Bible readers, when he, they wake him up and, 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 and she got to understand when, you, when, when they wake him up, he don't have a long conversation with the storm. He just said, peace be still. And some of y'all are talking about stuff too long. We need to take about the authority and say, peace be still. I am who God says I am. I have authority. I decree and declare that things are going to shift. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because if you're not careful, adversity can blind you to what he promised. He's begun a good work. He's going to perform him. He's going to, he's going to perform it. He's going to, he's going to perform it. In the country, when we were trying to get uh, the plants to be fresh, we had to do this thing called pruning. Yes, sir. <laughs> Take off dead leaves. Because the dead leaves were just taking the church, uh, nutrition from some leaves there was a, there was a calm that wanted life. You ain't you ain't you ain't gonna like this. And sometime in the church we gotta get rid of people who have died and don't want to do nothing. They gotta be pruned. Amen. And 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 the way to get rid of them you ain't gotta first just reassign them and find out where their heart is. So, so, so now Paul is in a defining moment and he said to the church, I, I'm confident, I'm, uh, I know God, God has begun this work in me. Now you got to understand, he, you, you got to understand, and, and this is a quick email, he, said, he says, your birth, your best development is in your storm. All right. you, you, you find new tools to work with when you're going through. Ah, I felt a, yes, I got to quit. Now I got to quit. I got a lecture. I don't want to holler, but I got to feel the glory there. You, you'll find your, you'll, you'll find best strategies when the pressure is on. And, 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 and Paul, Paul said, this is the final moment. Motivation is there. I, I, I got my momentum because he has done this thing. He has put me on front stage. He has done this. So he says, and let me get out of this last verse, this verse here, on display, he's putting confidence in the assignment while he's in the storm. You, you got to understand, I don't care where you go, people going to be people. Look at your name and say, neighbor, if they're a lot of God, they're a lot of you. Don't be surprised if they're unfaithful with God who, who blessed them every day, who provides for them. They're going to be inconsistent with you. Yes, sir. So, so, so he, he's displaying confidence. And I ain't got time to dig it out, but you know, God will test your confidence by going after what you love. Abraham, I know you went through a lot to get Isaac, but I want him back. Talk, talk, talk. And I want you to do now, take him to this mountain I'm going to show you. And, 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 and I want you to uh, 
and make a sacrifice of him. And Abraham went on and carried out the assignment and got to the mountain. Now watch this now. Gets to the mountain and he has some folk with him, but he leaves them at the bottom. There's a quick email. If you want your confidence messed up, carry the wrong folk with you. So he had to leave some folk Come on. at the bottom. Yes, sir. He's begun to work in me. He, so he leaves him at the bottom, and he says something to the people at the bottom. He said, I'm going up here now, yeah. go, go. and I'm coming back down. Come in the lad is going to make the, the sacrifice. Yes, sir. God told me the other day, he says, now, you got to get delivered from people's opinions. And just obey me, even when it don't make any sense. So he gets up there now. Watch it. This, this is important. He's covered in God. And, and he prepares for the sacrifice. Yes, sir. Now watch this now. Little Isaac has seen this before. Dad, it's something ain't right now. Something ain't right. I see altar. I see wood, but where is the sacrifice? Yes, sir. Mama, mama. Now, see, when you're in that verse, you got to prophesy to yourself, yes, sir. to your situation. He says to the Isaac, the Lord will provide. The Lord will provide. That's what now, he said. Now, 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 watch this now. Little Isaac knew something wasn't right. <laughs> yeah. Now, y'all ain't going to like this. You got some Isaacs. That come in the church and they can tell when something ain't. My, my, my. When something ain't right. Come on, man. They might not have the, the pedigree you think of, but they can tell yeah. what is genuine yeah. and what is not. Yeah. Come on, man. And look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, yeah. there's no substitute for power versus performance. Yeah. 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 People don't need performance, they need power. Yeah. They, 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 they need power. They need to have confidence that when you when when things don't look right out of balance, Isaac is saying this don't look right. Daddy, where the sacrifice, the daddy had a word, the Lord will provide. Yeah. Talk, talk. Paul tells his church, I'm confident this work is gonna go on. I'm motivated, I got my momentum. The promise ain't changed, it's an assignment. about being an apostle uh, versus being an apostle in, in title only. <laughs> Keep working, sir. <laughs> See, folk who have the title don't necessarily have the word. Right, right, right. Because what, what Paul is saying is now, I, I want y'all to understand this thing. Now. I want y'all to catch it. God's begun to work in me, but, but, but I'm trying to build your confidence. Philippian church, I know you've sown into me, and this is, can be kind of uh, uh, out of balance for you, uh, young saints, and seeing what I'm going through, but, but, I, but I want you to understand this adversity that I'm in is developing who I am in God, because it's developing you to understand that even though I'm in this situation, I want to develop you to walk in your faith. Now, now, I, I know y'all have it here, but you got a lot of folks who just whine all the time. They don't just tow my altar up and ain't nothing changed. <laughs> and some folks, when they come up for prayer, I say, oh, here they go again. I, I said, Lord, give me something to say, but it's going to be short. And most times, it's Lord, help. <laughs> no long prayer. Lord, help. He's, he's as an apostle, you want to establish. And Paul said, now this is my time to let this young church know the work is going on. God has set this thing up. He's going to complete it. He's going to complete it. He's going to complete it. How is folk who will be so mature in the Lord can encourage the new saints? Because y'all still fighting or who's going to be in charge. 
Paul said, I want y'all to look at me closely. Because this work is going on. It's not inconvenience. It's, 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 going, it's going to show forth that I, that I am real yeah. in my faith. Yeah. I ain't got time to take just a quick email. You know, we, we preach Paul and Silas, but we don't really understand that, 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 that midnights need to be discussed because midnight, theoretically, in the spiritual world is a time of transition to where we're trying to go from one day to another day. Yes, sir. And, 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 and many of us today are, are in that time now. We're trying to go trying to go from church to, to uh, expansion in community. We're trying to build economics, do more than just shout because the people got to understand now it ain't like in the old days where we were set there all day and people now watching, t watching church on TV and you ain't got but five minutes after that, they're going to change the channel. They're going to shift. And so we've got to understand now we need to be on point. Yes, sir. Come on. So Paul said, y'all watch me. Watch my faith. Now, I don't know about you, but I love a comeback story. Comeback story. Comeback story. He locked up, but he ain't crying. Locked up, but he ain't saying, woe is me. It is a finding moment because yes, this young church needs to know that faith in God still works. See, I've had some folk who gone through cancer, but when they understood that if I just praise him, trust him, he can heal. Now, this, these last verses, I got to get out of here because I said I was just going to kind of talk, but I feel something. And my old pastor said, something's trying to sneak up on me. I need, yes, to, I need to stop. 19 verse. When, when, when Paul says this to the church, he said, for I know this going to turn out for my deliverance. Anybody about five for back at me and say, you all know some things about God now. You all know some things about God now. Yes, sir. Ah, he, he don't lie. Right. He's never late. Talk, talk. And he has a way of framing things to where he going to get the glory. Yes, sir. And, and, and Paul, Paul says, in the latter verses, he says, he says, for I know yes, sir. this thing going to Turn. Look at somebody. Tell them these words. I feel the shift now. I, I, I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're feeling like. But I want you to understand that you've been set up to gain momentum. You've been set up to be more effective. You've been set up to walk in the power and the authority that God has given you. In this hour now, it's, it's, it's not about how much you go to church but how much God is in you. So that as, as I leave you here with these last few minutes, and I'm through, he says, this is going to turn out for my deliverance through your prayers and the supply of the spirit of Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. I, I, I don't know about you, some folk don't understand prayer ain't something you do when it's, uh, when it's convenient. Yes, sir. But your, your best prayers come when the heat is on. Yes. Anybody ever been there? Yes, sir. See, when the heat is on, you'll say some things you won't normally say. Lord, if you don't do it, yes, sir. it cannot be done. Yes, sir. So as I pass to leave you here now, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's a defining moment. A defining moment. Are you sure you know yeah. the God you say you know? God did not bring us this far. To leave us now, somebody here ought to know a shift is on the way because the prayers of the righteous avail him. Oh, 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 he's worthy. 
of all the praise. I got to get out of here now. It's your defining moment to know what you have in God. I got to leave here now. My time is up. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I ain't no joke. I know that I know that God has been taking care of me. Standing on faith. Moving through prayer. Having joy with my worship. Is there anybody here know that God is still worthy of all the praise? I got to leave you here now, but can I bother you? One more time, look at a neighbor and say, neighbor, I ain't no accident. I didn't survive by accident. I made a choice to keep my confidence because God promised me he'd never leave me. Oh, shucks. Or forsake me. Won't he do it? Oh, Lord. Yes, he will. Yes. Somebody say right now, I'm standing uh, on the word of God. It's turn because of my prayer life. It's turn because as I pray, there's a download of clarity. It's a download of who I am. It's a download that God is real. Real. The church will survive. Yes, we got to make some changes. Yes, we're going to lose some folk. But his word will stand. I'm through. Won't it do it? What would it do, Bishop? He'll keep his word. Help me praise him one time. Turn to the neighbor and say, Neighbor, I'm in a season while I'm shifting and believing God. He will he will, he will take care of you. It doesn't matter if nobody else see it. I, I see his power. I feel his grace. Yes. It's your moment. It's your time to do some work. And to trust God. Pastors. God told me. Don't worry. About how many you have. Follow my blueprint. If 12 men. Can turn a world. Upside down. Look at somebody say. What can you do? with your fire baptized holy field gold self oh. it has some power yes, sir. Yes, sir. in this climate we're in now today some folk were talking to me about the political, political arena Biden and Trump I said well y'all might want to read Rebecca well God has a way of taking injustice yes, sir. and whooping people into submission of finding God. Because sometimes it takes wickedness to make you appreciate yes, you what you have. Right right. I've tried to tell this generation, I, said, I come up in the, in the South in the 68, went to school when they first integrating. Some of y'all ain't seen color folk signs. Right. Right. Some of I ain't seen going on jobs and said, the only reason you got it is because the union said we had to hire black. Yes, sir. Right. And you're the only one that was smart enough to pass the test. Right. We've been waiting on some black person yeah. to pass the test so we can hire some more white folk. Because oh. y'all are standing in the way. And that's why it's so important now for young pastors to work a plan and to in, empower young people. They ain't going to do it like we do it. But however they do it, yeah. they're going to win their generation. They're going to win that generation. You are right. You got to understand, my, my generation did stuff like this, you know, 
that we're doing now. Y'all, right. y'all understand, some of you who are my age know that when folk would wave their hand and say, if it wasn't for Jesus, I wouldn't have no joy. But now you got different type worship. But it's all about God. Lift your hands. I'm through. Give it back to the bishop. Take up a little seat, man. Every pastor here now, Paul in his defining moment, let him know he's getting strategies. He said, whatever happened, if I die, it's a game. But if I stay here, Christ going to be preached. I don't know about you, but I'm telling preachers now, I don't care who leave me, who don't accept me. If I lift Jesus, and y'all get ready to see some men come back to the church because they've been struggling trying to cover up with drugs and alcohol, but they find it out that they got to go back to their glory, which is God. Lift those hands. Have your way, God. Somebody's defining moment has been a family issue. Somebody has been a defining moment of a health issue. But I want to release in the atmosphere what David said. David said, I can't worship you based on conditions. At all times, I want to bless your name. Come here, brother. I want to pray for you real quick. You, man, lift your hands. The Lord says to tell you, keep the pioneer spirit in the teaching and the diagrams He's getting you because I see you sitting in the chair to help young men and women to know that they got to have a plan, but they got to have power in God. Because a plan is no good, sir, if his hand is not laid on it. And God is saying he's using you to break the ceiling of corporate America. Executives will want to know what's your secret. Yes, I, and when you get them at the table, say, oh, it it wasn't my, it wasn't my planning, it wasn't my skill, but it was an anointing on my life. Nehemiah built a wall because there was a call. And you have that Nehemiah spirit to build You thought you were right. And God said, the next 60 days, you're going to write some stuff you ain't even thought about. Father, bless him now. Teaching power. Wealth is at his feet. Influence coming out of his mouth. Do it now, God. In Jesus' name. Lift those hands. I'm through. I want to pray and ask you for a little small seat today. Look at a neighbor and say, neighbor, what I came through gave me a different level of faith and I am a more intense worship. Oh my God. Y'all didn't get it, an intense worship. Which means I ain't waiting on nobody. When I think of the goodness of God, shit it up. What the devil meant for bad. God has shifted for your good. Here the Lord said, there's a book in you you shall write about women in recovery. I shall da 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 I shall da da Yes, I da 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 Because he said, in your pain, he gave you some secrets. Now put those secrets to pen and pencil. In those nights when you were in a lot of pain and a lot of Uh, despair. He spoke to you. He gave you strength to fly like an eagle. He said, a new prayer language coming. Prophetic, you shall prophesy. But you have to write. Because young girls need to know if they sell out to him. Uh, He'll meet every need. Because you did not compromise.
church. And you say, God, I don't, don't, don't know all about it, but I know enough to trust you. There it is. And because you trusted him, eyes have not seen. Yes, I. What God has in store for you and your children. I see a women's group that you are leading. Yeah, God's going to use you. I got to quit. I got to quit. I got to quit. Tell somebody, it's my time. I don't know about you, but I came to this conference for rest and restoration. Y'all didn't get it. I came for rest and restoration. I'm looking for something. I, I don't care if any but five folk. I'm going to get what I need. I'm going to pull on God. Father, thank you for the word today. Praise falling on good ground. Every person here, God, now will understand when they have a defining moment, they must be confident and understand that it's going to turn. And that God has not changed his promise because you're in a temporary storm. But if you continue to pray and continue to worship him, he will give you the desires of your heart. He the Lord said in this last email, he just said, he said, it is your private time with him. It will give you your public power. Yeah, it is your private time with him. It will give you the public power deal with demons, to deal with deception, to deal with delays because the more you talk to him he'll let you know who shifted on you because some folk walk with you last year, ain't walking now Tell but that's okay as long as God is walking with me that's, that's it, that's it and hear the Lord saying what you connect to does matter not just hanging around Bishop Bird because he got a big church. I'm hanging around Bishop Bird because he got power. Yeah. And, and he know how to love folk who have gone through transition. That's right. I told you a few minutes ago when, when, when Saul was in trouble, God, God knocked him down, put him in a waiting room, and then laid hands on him. That's your process. And when you are going through, you need to be connected with somebody that's got some power that will tell you your flesh is off. Sit down. Wait on God. Get clarity for your land. The tower ain't said land yet. It ain't said contain a circle. Just say what God said. Trust God. That was a good word last night. In everything. How many of y'all know it's hard with hell breaking loose? Anybody been there? Money jacked up. For acting a fool on your job. Now I know y'all, but what, it, what get me, woman of God, is the folk who are saved are the worst supervisors. Yeah. Speaking tongue, can't get along with nobody. It's just crazy. Nobody. 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 Father, thank you for the word. We want to be different. And Father, the teaching hour is coming, and the man of God, the women of God are going to teach God. Let it be so fresh yeah. that those who are here will get what they need. Thank you, Lord, for this conference. We got some challenges, God, but we are confident that this adversity will define our faith and we will stand knowing it's going to turn. In fact, God, we're so crazy, we're going to call the shift is already taking place. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Real quickly, if you get a seat in your hand, real quick, can you do at least a forty-dollar seat today? Amen. Get your forty-dollar seat today. All right. Amen. Is it all right, Bishop? Am I in order? All right. I want to make sure. If I ain't doing something right, tell me now. Get your forty-dollar seat today. Amen. I know we got a long week, but we want to get forty-dollars. Amen. The transitional thing that we're going through, that's gonna break it. Amen. He's an awesome God. Look at somebody and say, all I got is God. And I want you to know he don't bring you to leave you. And some of y'all right now, deal with something. Get your 40. Lady watch has got our 40, amen. Just bring it up, give it in. Maybe, maybe you got your car, do that. I want you just to be. And if you 
have more you want to sow, sow that, amen. Give what God placed on your heart, but I just ask for the 40, amen. I, I feel all right today. They can, they can use right there, you can use Cash App, Give a five, amen. Or the one in person in your hand, amen. Wow. This is our conference, amen. I'm excited to be here. Yes, sir. Amen. Will I do anything? I'm good, amen. I needed this. Classes start. Okay, I gave y'all a little time. All right. You got, you got 20 minutes. When I do my sessions with my inmates, they get a 20 minute break. That's all. So give y'all 20 minutes. Amen. God is good. All right. All right, Bishop. I'm gonna give it back to you. Sir. Can we clap our hands and bless the Lord, everybody? Oh, come on, take 30 seconds and bless God for the ministry of Bishop Esau Watson. Come on, clap your hands. Come on, clap your hands and thank God. I'm so thankful for each of you that are present. Uh, uh, Pastor Tanya and I were talking this morning about Bishop Esau. I remember uh, the first time he came to minister for us. It had been uh, actually, I think, um, maybe f five, six years ago. I don't know how long ago it was. But we brought him in to do uh, something on intercession. He ministered on Sunday morning. And if you, if you watch him, he'll fool you because he comes in all unassuming. And, you know, my daughter last night said he just said, Bishop, Bishop Watson just showed up. Say, I, just, I looked around, blinked my eyes, and he was just sitting there. Say, you know, and he, he just comes in just all unassuming and. I, I call him the Colombo preacher. He, he, you, you, you don't know quite what to, what to expect, and and he, he's kind of talking. And next thing you know, he has led you right into the middle of an anointing, <laughs> and the glory just falls. Come on, clap your hands and thank God for the man of God. Come on, what a tremendous word! Look at somebody and say, "This is my defining moment." Oh, come on, look at somebody and say, this is my defining moment. Bless you, Bishop. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Paula. I, I thought uh, for a moment when you got up to introduce him and you got up in the middle of that glory, I thought we weren't going to get out of that. Uh, my God, the glory was in this place. Listen, we're going to go over into the event center in the admin building and take a few moments to uh, recollect. There are refreshments there. And so we can uh, have a few moments together and then we'll begin the um, uh, teaching um, presentations at uh, around 1.30. Uh, I think uh, Apostle Ken is doing the first session, if I remember correctly. He's uh, talking about from prophecy to prophets. There's a heavy anointing on his life for business and for uh, financial manifestation and so he's going to be talking about from prophecy to prophets and then the second session we have uh, two of our administrators who are going to be talking about uh, building a dream team how to put together an administrative team that will uh, take what uh, you do in the office and make it work in the sanctuary and so we are excited uh, this afternoon about just being able to share together. Those of you uh, that are watching online, thank you so much for sharing uh, with us in the worship. Um, we will be able to access the classes via Zoom. And so if you uh, want to watch the uh, classes, uh, then we want to uh, certainly uh, give you the opportunity to do that. Um, there has not been a registration uh, for the conference, uh, but I am going to ask that if you uh, want the Zoom link, uh, send a little something so we can send it to you, all right? 
Amen. Hallelujah. I do know that Pastor Fran in Delaware and several of the pastors there are watching via Zoom. And we have a number of pastors uh, across these three or four states that are sharing. God bless Apostle John Jackson. Come on, clap your hands. Thank God for him. Amen. God bless Pastor Harriet Reed. Come on, clap your hands. Thank God for her. Amen. For all of the pastors that have gathered, uh, Pastors Floyd and uh, Pastor Crystal Daniels. Go, Pastor Crystal. Just were installed last week, I believe, a man at uh, uh, the ministry there, uh, Deliverance Temple of Praise, is that right? Amen. And so we are so thankful, amen, for each of you. Look at somebody and say, I love you, and I love the Lord in you. Amen. Come on, we're standing. Hallelujah. Pastor John, come and dismiss us with you as we get ready to go over into uh, the other session. Pray the Lord's blessing upon us. He's getting ready for his first year anniversary after uh, relaunching. Amen. Is it next week or next Sunday? All right, we'll be there. Look forward to amen, celebrating with you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we love you, we honor you, we thank you, and we adore you. We thank you for your word that have been released even now, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you now. We pray that you will even touch Bishop, Father God that have released what you have given him to give to us on this day. And Father, we say we, we receive it in Jesus' mighty and matchless name. Now as we prepare for the class, we pray that you will bless us and keep us and cover us. And we thank you now for the information that we're about to receive. In Jesus' mighty and matchless name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you for watching our online stream. Be sure to join us Sundays at 10 a.m. as well as Wednesday nights at 7.30 p.m. Don't forget to like and share the video with your friends and family as we continue to spread the gospel around the world. Sow your seed today via any one of our convenient online methods. Until we meet again, go now in the favor of God, knowing that the favor of God has already gone before you.